Some of you may remember uh, back in March. You guys remember March? It was cold. We had the snow in April. You guys remember all of that? Okay. Um, but in March, we took a group of people uh, down to uh, La Romana, Dominican Republic. And uh, we, we partnered um, down there with a guy named Graviel. Um, and I'm not going to tell too much of his story, but Graviel is here with us today. So Graviel, I'm going to invite you to come on up because he's going to share with you this morning. Um, but also uh, challenge us this morning. That was, that was well done, brother. Uh, you're making me look bad with the suit, um, but that's okay. I'm going to forgive him today. Next time you come, you got to wear like shorts and a t-shirt or jeans and a t-shirt, okay? Um, okay, that's a, that's a requirement. Can't make me look bad. Um, but Graviel is, is from the Dominican Republic, and we're so thankful that you're here today. He's going to share with you, and then I'm going to come back and pray over him and his ministry. But let me pray for you right now. Is that all right? God, thank you so much that Graviel is here this morning. God, I just pray that you would speak through him right now. God, use his words uh, to challenge us, to speak to our hearts about what you're doing, how your gospel is moving, not only here, but around the world. And so, God, we are so excited to hear what you're doing in and through this man. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Well, first of all, I, I will try not to talk too long. In my country, they say it is best to leave the audience before the audience leaves you. <laughs> um, but before sharing about uh, my ministry, the work we are doing in the Dominican, I want to share the gospel with you. And it's going to take maybe less than five minutes. Uh, first of all, uh, if we go to the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 5, we can see that God made a promise to Abraham. And the promise was um, a nation. So God said to Abraham, look up, at, look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. God also reconfirmed the same promise to Isaac and to Jacob. So, but in the chapter 15, verse 13, God told Abraham, know for certain that your descendants, the nation that I'm giving you, the nation that will come from you, will be strangers and in a country not their own. And they will be enslaved and mistreated 400 years. So that's the first thing, 400 years. So when we go to Jacob, who had 12 kids, Jacob, uh, one of those 12 kids was uh, Joseph. And I, I'm sure you know the story. Joseph, uh, Jacob loved uh, Joseph. So in, uh, in Genesis chapter 37, 28, Joseph's brothers sold him for 20 shekels, which is like $200 today. And Joseph was taken to Egypt. So uh, Jacob's son, they went back home and they lied to Jacob. They told him that Joseph was killed. And this man, his reaction to that, uh, chapter 37, verse 34 says that his reaction to that was that he told his clothes, put on sackcloth, and moaned for his son many days. He was suffering because of the news of lo uh, uh, the loss of Joseph. So the Bible says in the verse 35 that all his sons and daughters, they came to comfort Jacob, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, Joseph had a very special place in the heart of this man. And even when Jacob's son went to him uh, to bring Benjamin, who was Joseph's youngest son, uh, in the verse, Jacob told his sons about taking Benjamin to Egypt. He said to them, Joseph, Joseph is dead, and he, who is Benjamin, is the only one left. Benjamin was the only one left from uh, uh, Joseph's mom, because they were brothers from uh, the same mom. But he had 11 kids. He had 11 kids. 
He lost just, he lost just one of them. So he said, Joseph is dead and, and he, Benjamin, is the only one left. If harm comes to him, if harm comes to him on the journey you are taking, you will bring my gray head to the grave in sorrow. Which means that Benjamin and Joseph, they have a very special, they had a very special place in the heart of these men. Even more than the older kids. So, and what surprises me the most is that God used to communicate with this man. He used to communicate with Jacob. And God knew that Joseph was alive. But he never said anything to him. He never said anything to him. And this man, jo Jacob, he was going through a lot of pain. A lot of suffering. And God didn't say anything to him. Now imagine for one moment. You having a friend. And you lost a loved one. And, you, and your friend know that your loved one is alive. But doesn't say anything to you. How would you react? And that was the situation. And the reason why God didn't say anything to, to, to Jacob. Is because I believe that is the same reason that happened to Abraham. At some point Isaac took over the heart of this man. And God told Abraham, sacrifice your son for me. And when, he was, when Abraham was about to sacrifice his son, God said, do not lay your hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. So the same thing. This man was suffering because he's in his mind and in his heart, his son was dead. And what I can say about that is that no one can take over your heart but God. No one, you cannot, we cannot allow anything or anyone to take over our heart. The Bible says, love the Lord with all your heart. God has to be the first one in our heart. We cannot have a son in our heart. We cannot have a wife, a husband, a car, money. God has to be the first one. So in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, the, uh, the Bible says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So my question is, what is your treasure? Is your treasure a job? Is your treasure your family? Is your treasure your wife? Husband? Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So today... You have to embrace, you have to believe that the treasure that we have is Jesus. And once we realize that he is our treasure, then there our heart will be. And we will see things differently. But there is something in Genesis chapter 46 too, God spoke to Jacob. And he said to him in verse 2, the first thing that he said to him, he called Jacob, Jacob. And he said, I am God. Which means dominion over all things. Which means the source of power. Which means sufficient. When he says, when he said, I am, he is self-sufficient. Self-sustaining. The God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be. So, I am God. Which means you have to believe what I'm about to say. So, in the verse uh, 2... He said to Jacob, and that was God talking to Jacob. He said, do not be afraid to go down to Egypt. It's a little complicated because in Genesis chapter 15, he said that the nation will be mistreated. And the nation will be enslaved in a country that is not their own. And now you're telling me, don't be afraid to go down to Egypt? It doesn't make any sense, right? But there is something more special. In verse number 4, God says... I will go down to Egypt with you. It doesn't matter if we have to cross the river of pain. It doesn't matter if we, have, if we are going through a lot of pain. God is with us. He will go with us. It doesn't matter if we see our country divided. It doesn't matter if we lost our job. We have to believe that God is with us. 
And that's why he, in the verse 1, he told Jacob, I am God. That's the first thing you have to understand. And I know it's hard, you know, when you are not going through the situation to say God is with me. But when you are going through the situation, it's hard to believe that God is with you. But he is indeed with each one of us. And we have to believe that. And we can never forget that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And we have to embrace this reality. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. God is our God. And he will uphold each one of us with his righteous hand, always. And there are three things that I want, to, I want you to keep in your heart from this. First thing, do not allow anything or anyone to take over your heart. You have to allow only God to control your heart. Because when you allow God to control your heart, you will know how to love unconditionally. There are many types of love, but God's love is unconditionally. That's why he has to control our heart. Second, sometimes we might not get answers from God. And that doesn't mean that God is not with us. Jacob went through a lot of pain because he thought that his son was alive. And God never say anything to him. Sometime. And I know nowadays we have more questions than answers. I know. And sometimes we, don't, we, will, ne we will not get an answer. But we have to keep believing. We have to believe that he is with us. Even if we don't have an answer from him. And last. God has been with us. God is with us. And God will always be with each one of us. God bless his word. I'm, I'm going to pray just for one minute. And then I'm going to share about my life and ministry just for five minutes. Padre, gracias por tu amor, por tu misericordia y por el privilegio de estar aquí, Señor. Te, te pido que tu palabra pueda abrir sus corazones, Señor. Y puedan entender que solamente a través de usted... Tenemos vida, Señor. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Now, about my ministry. I was born and raised in, in the Bate. Bate is our communities within the sugarcane fields where Haitians and their descendants live. Now, I come from a big family. I have uh, ten brothers. Ten, uh, five, uh, five brothers and five sisters. We were ten in total. And uh, just imagine living in a Bate with no electricity, no running water. And uh, it's, it's really hard. So basically, we used to have one meal a day. Just one meal a day. And uh, so one day, I went to the school, went back home, and um, there was no food at home. And uh, the, the, I went to the train station to, uh, to grab some sugar cane, which is sweet. And uh, I was only six years old. So when I went to the train station to grab the sugar cane, I fell onto the railroad tracks. Unable to move, I was run over by the train car, and I lost my entire right leg. So for 10, 11 years, I was um, sending out letters to politicians, organizations, and people to see if they could help me to get a prosthetic. And I never received a response until I met a group of missionaries that they went down to the Dominican to do mission work. And uh, with the collective support of many, I was able to come to this country for the first time at the age of 16, I believe 16, 17, and I was fitted with my, uh, with my first artificial leg, which changed my whole life. So when I went back home, I realized that there were a lot of people going through the same situation, and that's how God put in my heart to, uh, to build this ministry, Centro de Prothesis, so a prosthetic and physical therapy center, uh, to help people that have lost either a pair or lower extremities. But also with the uh, counseling support, most of the people that go through uh, amputation, they go through what we call uh, psychologic issue, and we help with the physical therapy. So from 2017 that we started the first 
2017, we were able to help 45 people. Uh, 2019, 107. And, uh, and right now, we have over 800 people in our waiting list. So this is not only... Yeah. So this is not only a, an organization supporting uh, amputees in the Dominican and, and Haiti. We have also helped people from Guatemala. We have helped people from Venezuela, from Bolivia. And I don't know how, but somehow they go through, uh, they find our organization on social media and they reach out to us and they ask for that. I don't know if uh, we can project some of the pictures. So this is part of my team. Go ahead. That was part of the clinic. As you can see, a lot of people. Yeah. This is the prosthetic arm. We also provide prosthetic arm. We're trying to do it fast. And this is the hand that we are providing. Uh -huh. Some of the patient. Yep. And also the LN4 hand. As you can see, the guy holding the phone. Yep. 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 So you will, okay. You can play the video, please. Okay. She, she is from uh, Puerto Plata. Okay, keep going. We were able to feed her with two prosthetic. Go ahead. And she's walking for the first time. All right, keep going. This is another patient. Camina. Um, See? <laughs> okay. Next. All right, next. Next. That's the physical therapy. Yes. That was the patient we held from um, Guatemala, seven years old. All right, next. This is from Bolivia, next. And we, besides helping with prosthetic, we also help a special needs kid with food. But you're not gonna see those pictures on social media because we try to respect people's dignity. Go ahead, yeah. So I don't believe in politicians, but uh, many years ago I sent an email to the mayor of La Romana uh, explaining who we are and asking them to donate a land to build our center, and the land was donated. So next, we had the groundbreaking. Next, volunteers helping building the center. Next, and this is how the building looks like at this moment. Next. Yeah. Next, and one of the things that we do to uh, support the construction is to promote uh, a book about a guy named Gabriel, who came from a bate, lost his leg, and now he's trying to pay it forward to help others. So this is a way of supporting the organization with the construction. It's uh, uh, selling the book. Uh, like I keep saying, this is my story, and I don't know why I keep reading the book over and over. So, <laughs> go ahead. And this is how uh, social media and all that. Um, so, I'm done with the mission and all that. But before, uh, I think, well, less than 50 minutes, right? <laughs> all right. So, but before uh, closing this time, I want to take a moment because when I was growing up in the Bate, I had no chance, I had no hope, and I met uh, some missionaries. And I'm so happy uh, some of them are here with us today. So the first missionary that I met in La Romana, his name is Josh. When I met him, I didn't know how to say anything in, this, in English. And he didn't know how to say anything in Spanish. So he used to pick me up in a truck. And I used to be with him all day long. And he was like, he looked at me, I look at him, nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at some point he told me, if you want to learn English, you have to talk. You have to talk. All right. 
So I was able to learn some English, and I went to visit him a couple of years after that. And then I started to ask him so many questions, and he told me, you need to shut up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Josh, would you please stand up? And Tina. So he was the fir one of the first missionaries that I met in the Dominican Republic. And um, through Josh, I met Debbie. Debbie, would you please stand up? And Stephen, please stand up. Those people, believe in me. They, they gave me hope. They gave without expecting anything. I was only 10 years old when I met them. Every, every year, they used to go down to the DR, you know, bring gift to me, to my family, get me books to learn English. I am who I am because of them. I am a result of missionaries. I want to pay it forward. <laughs> so I want to thank them. Josh, Tina, Debbie, Stephen, Christy, many other peoples, people who you might you don't know but i want to honor them in front of the church and i want to thank them for believing in me and for investing in me and today you can see the result of missionaries and and what we have gotten from them yeah, thank you it's uh unbelievable knowing him even though we may have given, he has given as well. And Debbie and I both have n known him for a long time and he's been there always with Jesus, always with Jesus on his heart and always uh, trying to g make himself better. And he, look at him today, look at his clinic. And, and you guys are thinking on, maybe in hoping, gonna support that. And, and it, it, like I said a minute ago, it's not only just helping people with prosthetics or food, it's Jesus that's driving it. And that's the bottom line. And Thank you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray, Josh, why don't you yeah. stay up here? Um, that's awesome. Uh, can we just give Graviel and his ministry one more hand? I think that's awesome. Pray, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Jim, if Jim and Karen, if you guys will come up, um, and we're gonna we're gonna pray over them and their ministry. A couple things. Um, I always like to tell missionaries. Don't worry about being the shoe salesman. I'll do that for you. Um, and so he's got, how many copies did you bring, Debbie, of his book? We have about 15 with us today. 15? I don't think that's enough. Um, <laughs> all right. And so these are $20 regularly. Um, they're on sale today for 100 okay? And so you can, um, you can, you can buy one of these. Um, it's, it's his story. If you've got kids or grandkids, you know, early Christmas present, something like that, just, um, it's a great, it's a great story, um, it's a great story, it's almost like uh, I had a personal experience with this book, um, and, and know the guy, but uh, did you want to say something? Yes, I just wanted to mention, uh, when I first met 
when I first met Gabriel, I picked him up and he was a friend of the missionary and I was taking the place of a missionary down there for five months. I just, I just do construction and that's all I did. But anyways, Gabriel had, a, had lost his leg right here. It wasn't here or anything. It's right there at the hip. And he was on a crutch and he could move. <laughs> he, he could probably outrun most any, anybody, even the Dominicans down there. He could move. I saw him climb step ladders 12 feet high and hop up and hop down. So I've seen kind of amazing things with this young fellow. And now an older man that he's doing quite well. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was just amazed. I couldn't believe it. Awesome. Yeah, and so you saw the clinic. Um, our team in March poured the columns, uh, well, most of the columns there. Um, and so we'll see how long that roof lasts <laughs> um, there. But uh, it's so exciting to see. And his goal um, is to finish two of the rooms there. Um, and, and our hope is we're taking another trip down March 8th. And so if you want to be a part of that trip with Graviel, um, make sure you see Jim today. He would love to, to, to put your name down to come with us March 8th, uh, back down to be with Graviel, to partner with his church. He serves an amazing church as a deacon uh, there. And we got, to, we got to worship with their church. And just an incredible, incredible experience. And so our team is excited to go back down, but the goal is to have two of the rooms mm -hmm. in the clinic finished mm -hmm. um, so that he can start operating out of there. He's operating out of his, his car right now. And uh, the, another big prayer request that they have is a truck. Um, now their trucks are a little less expensive than our trucks here, um, but they're, paying for, they're praying for about fifteen to $17,000 um, to be able to purchase a truck so that Graviel can um, um, fit prosthetics on, on wheels uh, with, with, with trucks instead of out of the trunk of his car. And just, just really quick, am I, am I correct in saying this? You would be the first, or you are the first, the first prosthetic yeah. clinic mm -hmm. in the Dominican the Republic. First. Yep. Yeah. Which, is, which is incredible. And yeah. so um, we're proud of you. We're proud of your perseverance. We're proud of your faithfulness. We're proud of, um, we, got to, we got to see Graviel fit three or four um, people with prosthetic while we were down there in March. And it's a, it's a life-changing experience to be able to see that. You know, for, for people to be able to walk in on crutches and walk out without them. Mm -hmm. And what a beautiful, what a beautiful gift you're giving people. And so if you can help in any way, financially this morning, buying a book, anything like that. Graviel is going to be out in the lobby after the service, and he would love to um, talk with you, answer any questions that you may have. Um, but let's, let's buy all those books at least, okay? <laughs> Promise? <laughs> okay, good. All right. Let me pray for you in your ministry. God, thank you so much for Graviel. Thank you for, God, just his willingness to come, his willingness to uh, leave his life, in the DR to come to the states to meet with Summit to meet to go down to Georgia this week to meet with a bunch of people and try to raise awareness and support for what we believe you're doing in the DR uh, both in him this clinic his church um, everything he touches and God I just pray that you would expand his territory God, I pray that you would grow his ministry. God, I pray that you would keep him faithful to you in the meantime. And God, I thank you for the people that are around him, the people that are holding his arms up, the people that are supporting him. And God, I just pray that you give them strength and provision in this season for what's next. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.